Art is something that I think many people would describe as distant and foreign. It's something you did as a child. Your fingers, your paintbrush, your drool, your paint, and the walls, your infinite canvas. Or it's something your fifth grade teacher made you do. And we complained about it, <laughs> ungrateful children. However, art is a concept much more familiar to you than you may realize and holds the key to pushing innovation to more sophisticated levels. Many of you have lived here in Silicon Valley your whole lives. You grew up with engineers or parents, coding classes on the weekends, tears when you finally found an accidental slash in your code after five hours. At the very least, I can confidently say that you are all aware of the heavy STEM atmosphere in this area. Kind of hard to miss it really when every wrong turn you make you end up in an Apple building. Another thing you might notice living here is there isn't a strong affinity for artistic creativity. It's not surprising. Coming to the technology hub of the world, you wouldn't really expect to see art. After all, think about the images that pop up in your head at the word art. Van Gogh, Picasso, Dali, and so on. Not quite the spitting images of logical thinkers. This expectation stems from the misconception that the world of science, logic, and math does not collide in any way with the world of abstract romantic poeticism. Because of this, it's understandable that many people distance themselves purposely from art because they believe they are more suited for STEM, or vice versa. However, the term art is changing and has been evolving for the past decades. Art is adaptive. It was at first a way to document memories, people, and the marks left behind by history. Then it became an expression of self, a way to let go of any internal emotions and feelings. But now, it's all of these things, but it's also useful. It is used to advertise, to entice, to persuade and inform. You might be confused. Art can do all of these things? Yes. Because anything that is intentional and creative, anything that is designed and visual can be considered art, the visual media is capable of doing all these things. Let me give you some examples. How many of you can't really tell what is considered contemporary art? It's difficult to distinguish. There was a kind of social experiment a few years ago where a person put a pair of glasses, probably just something they found at home from middle school, put a plaque next to it that had an identical format as the other exhibits, and deceived people into believing it was a piece there. No one knew. Passerbys looked at it curiously, discussing what the artist could have intended, why it was a pair of broken glasses, and so on. In hindsight, it sounds a little stupid. People mock contemporary art for this reason. Anything can be considered art. But that's exactly my point. Art has no restrictions. Allow me to give you a bit more of a focused example. My mother is a graduate of the San Francisco Academy of Art University and is now a graphic, web, and UX, or user experience, designer. Basically, she makes the websites that engineers create look pretty and appealing. She adds effects so that while the user scrolls on the page, the website moves and changes, giving it more of an interactive feel than just any old website. She makes elaborate collages with images and colors that hypnotize. I remember growing up, she would do her own projects as well, such as making an elaborate and detailed set of topography. It was incredible to watch, because I'd never seen someone spend six hours trying to write the letter A. It was then that I realized that while it is not conventional, Graphic design is undeniably a form of art, no matter what its purpose is for. If my mother could make the alphabet into art, then why can't anything be made into art? OK, so art is everywhere. It's design. It's an object. It's anything we want it to be. 
So how do we use it? Well, as innovators, we want to be able to incorporate art with what we make, not just for the visual appeal, but because we as humans react to the emotional and creative efforts that are put in behind an idea. Now, this overlapping of art and innovation is where we start to have problems. Often, the mindsets of engineers and artists clash a little too close for comfort. I've seen my mother in a huff several times because she knows that visually, this font or that image or this color will not work with the website in any way, but her less visually apt coworkers say otherwise. However, once she works out the kinks in a project with her coworkers, I've seen amazing end results that simply dazzle. They're gorgeous to look at, but they're also flawless in terms of execution and application. A simple way to look at this would, to be, would be to view a website that we all know. Now, how many of us in here watch YouTube? Can I see some hands? Yeah, many of us. Now, how many of us have been watching YouTube since its old format? No, not the update before this one or from a few years ago. I mean, the first format of YouTube. I don't think many of us know the old format, which is a blessing because honestly, it was kind of a tragic atrocity. <sighs> the bland colors. The outdated font, the way the website throws up all these options and choices at the user, is just all a mess, to be completely honest. It can be forgiven, I guess, considering it was made more than 10 years ago. But let's take a look at today's format. The clean colors. The simplicity while still allowing the user to access whatever they need to. How it has a focus to the overall website. So much better, isn't it? The artistic choices in terms of the color scheme, formatting, everything comes together to make a much more satisfying piece of design. The user feels at home and comfortable. We want to actually use the website. Is there a lot that changed in terms of the product intent itself? No. YouTube has been and is a platform for users to create and watch videos. It's just become more alluring. I mean, what's the point of having an amazing product or website that no one will use because it's, for lack of a better word, ugly? It will go to waste. So much potential gone in a blink. It's easy to brag that your product is so good that even if it's terrible looking, people will be drawn to it because it's that, it's that good. But it's kind of like, would you rather eat? an in and out burger with the crunchy fresh greens and tomato peeking out and the meat nicely cooked or a suspicious looking burger with a weird lack of vegetables and the meanest school cafeteria food color that the cook claims is the best thing you'll eat. Sorry, but I don't think I would take my chances. I've seen too many crime shows to know where this is going. Basically, Innovation without artistic appeal can be close to pointless. We're just made that way as humans. It's how we've grown. As content creators, innovators, engineers, artists alike, we must cater to our audience what they're going to want. How you present something shows how much you care about it. If we are truly to be the generations of innovation, then we must understand this connection. After all, with this in mind, how much more refined can our ideas become? How many more startups can begin to blossom and bloom? How many more Apples and Samsungs and Googles can rise? Let's start to build with both logic and creativity hand in hand. And I cannot wait to see what can come out of this. Thank you.